In this video tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to create a fairly simple catcher game using Python code. And we will be making um, use of the Pygame Zero module in Python to help us build this game. Now to give you an example of what this catching game is all about, I'll give you a quick preview of it. And what we are is this little pirate ship down the bottom here. Our job is to go on a bit of a treasure hunt and collect the gold coins that fall from the sky. Each time you collect a gold coin, the game becomes slightly faster. Well, the coins will fall slightly faster from the sky, making them a little bit harder to catch. Okay, so I'm just trying to collect enough so you can see it's starting to speed up. Once you get to about 10 on your score, you can start to see it does speed up a bit. All right, so that's the objective of the game. If you hit the white skull falling from the sky, you would have just heard me do that. It takes a point off your score. You don't lose any lives but you do lose a point from your score, and that will start to slow the game back down again. Okay, uh, the other thing that you can hit is the bomb. Now, if you hit a bomb, it, you will lose one of your three lives up the top there, and once you lose all three lives, it is game over, and your final score will be displayed on the screen. So the objective of the game is to basically get the highest score possible. Alright, so that is the game Treasure Hunt, and that's what we're going to be making in this video series. I'm going to split it up into about five different videos, just so it's in small chunks to keep it fairly simple and easy to understand for you. Um, what we need to do to get started, first of all, load up your Python editor. I'm using the Python editor Mew. If you want to download that, I'll put a link in the video description below. It's just a free program, excellent for beginners in coding. Uh, if you want to use another program, by all means go for it, but I'll be using Mew today. Now if you are using Mew like me, make yourself a new document and change your mode up here in the top left to the Pygame Zero mode and click OK. Okay, so that means we are ready to start coding now. We can just delete that line that's already there. Now before we actually do start coding, we do need to get our folder structure set up. That's very important with Pygame Zero. So what you need to do is go into your accounts and make a folder called treasure hunt somewhere. And once you've made that treasure hunt folder, open it up and make for me three more new folders with these names here, fonts, images, and sounds. Make sure they're spelt correctly with lowercase letters. That is really important to make sure our game works properly. And if you're in my class, I'm going to give you the assets that you need to put inside of these folders. If you're watching on YouTube, just look in the video description below and there'll be a link to all the different um, assets you need in this game. So first of all, you're going to need in the fonts folder, the public pixel font. In the images folder, we've got five different images there that we use to create our game. And in the sounds folder at the bottom there, there's four different sounds we use throughout the game as well. Okay, so once you've got that folder structure all set up, just jump back over to your Python editor and save this empty um, file for me. Now it needs to go into that treasure hunt folder that you've just created. And I'm just going to stick with the same name as the folder for my file here. I'm just going to call it um, treasure hunt as well. Let's click on save and you are good to get going now. So let's begin the coding process. First of all, we need to import the modules that we need to help us create this game using Python code. So the first thing I'm going to import is the PGZ or PGZ run module. Okay, and I'm going to put a comment next to this that just says load the Pygame zero module to allow us to code a game in Python. That's all that module does. And the other module we need to bring in for this game is the random module. Okay, and the random module just allows us to randomize some things throughout the game. And what we're going to be randomizing is the um, are those objects that fall from the sky. We're going to randomize the position. Each time they fall down the page, they're going to be in a random location when they start falling. So we'll put a quick comment in that just says, load the random module to allow us to randomize things. Could write in the game, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about there. All right, so the two modules we need to get this game working properly today. We don't need too many, um, so those two will be enough. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the game screen dimensions. So I'm going to put another comment in that says set up the game screen dimensions. Now for those of you that are unaware what I'm doing here with these comments, comments aren't actually part of your code. It's just plain simple English that explain to other coders what's happening in your program. 
Okay, so it's good to describe what's happening so people can easily make sense of your code. That's why I'm including comments in my program. And the way you put in a comment is just put a hashtag and the computer knows straight away whatever comes after that hashtag is a comment and it won't read it. It just skips straight past it and continues processing the rest of the code. Okay, so it's really good practice to use comments in your code and I'll be doing that quite a bit in today's video. Alright, so we're setting up the game screen dimensions. The way we do that is we need to set up the width and the height. And there are some key words in Pygame Zero called width and height, written in capital letters, that we can use to set those dimensions of the game screen. So for the width, I'm going to set it to 800 pixels. All we need to do is write the number 800 in. For the height, we're going to set it to 600 pixels. Okay, and that sets our game screen dimensions up. If you save your program and just press play at the top, you'll see that your window will appear 800 pixels across, 600 pixels down. If you want to play around with those numbers, by all means go for it, just to test what that actually does. So if I half the size of the height, you can see that my window becomes quite small. You could do the same for the width if you wanted to, just half the size of that. And you can see what it does. Alright, so we want to stick with 800 by 600 today, so make sure you... Um, after you finish playing around, you get those dimensions at 800 by 600 pixels. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to put a backdrop or a background picture into the game. If I go into my images folder, this is the background we're going to be using. I've already resized it in Photoshop to be 800 pixels across and 600 pixels down, so it fits perfectly into our game. Alright, so to put that in, what we need to do first of all, I'll just write a comment here. Okay, we need to create a variable for this background. So a variable um, with the name BG will do. You can call it whatever you want. You could call it background or backdrop. BG is short for background, so that's what I'm going to roll with. I'm going to write BG equals, I'm going to write actor with a capital A, and in brackets and quotation marks, I'm going to put this file name. It's just background. And that's it. That now attaches the background picture that I just showed you to this variable called BG. And we can then draw that background into our game. So what we need to do now, <coughs> excuse me, is go down a couple of lines and write a function. It's going to be a draw function. So we're going to define a function called draw. Okay, now this function called draw is one of the main functions that run in Pygame Zero and it basically is used to draw objects onto our screen or into our game. So what we're going to do is just write bg, which is that variable we just created, and put dot draw, and open and close a set of brackets. And that simply draws the background onto the screen. So let's test that out. Press play at the top. You can see now we've got this backdrop into our game. Now, I don't know if yours will do the same as mine, but I get this black strip at the bottom, which is, I guess, kind of a glitch with Mew, but that will disappear a little bit later on. We need to add a bit more code before that does disappear. Okay, so if you've got a bit of a black strip at the bottom, that's fine, but that backdrop will go all the way to the bottom once we get rid of that black strip. Okay, so if yours is looking like mine, don't stress, it's all good. So we've got our backdrop in. Next thing I'm going to do is start to bring in the other elements, or the other pictures, basically, that we need to use throughout our game. So... Back up in this top section here, underneath where we put the background in, I'm going to put in the ship next. So I'll put in a comment that says ship. And we're going to create a variable called ship. And we're going to set that equal to, and we're going to write the actor again. And in quotation marks, I'm just going to write the name of the ship file, which is ship. Close off the quotation marks and brackets. And that now attaches that ship image from our images folder to the ship variable. Uh, now if you want, you can set the X and Y position as well. So that means you can set the coordinates for where this ship is going to go on our page. Now, I believe I've got an image here. Here we go. That roughly shows you how our screen looks at the moment. So as I said before, we've got 800 pixels across and 600 pixels down for our game screen size. The X axis in our game runs from left to right. It's the horizontal plane. The y-axis runs up and down. Okay, that's the vertical axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the computer a set of x and y coordinates for where I want my ship to be positioned. And that's going to be in the middle of the page, right down near the very bottom. Okay, so in my code, 
I just need to write ship dot x and tell it what x position I want my ship at. So I know the width is 800 pixels. Half of that is 400, so I'm going to put 400 for my x value. Going back to that picture, remember the x axis runs left to right there, so right in the middle. My ship is going to be positioned right there to start with. But to move it to the bottom, we need to look at this y value. We know the very bottom of the page is 600 pixels, so I'm going to move it up a little bit from there. So if I write ship.y and set it to about 550, that should put my ship in the middle of the page at the very bottom. Let's give it a test run. Oh, that's right, we don't see anything yet because with that black strip and we haven't drawn it on the page. So down the bottom here in the draw function, don't forget we need to write ship.draw. As I said, we'll test it, but we won't see it because of that stupid black strip that's down there. But in a moment, or well, probably in the next video actually, we'll start to get that working. Okay, so for now, trust me, your ship is there. We just can't see it working at the moment. Uh, next thing we're going to do is put the coin in, so the little coin that we can collect. Let's create a variable called coin and set that to the actor. Um, where's my folders? Here we are. Images. It's called coin. All right, and the same thing. Let's set the X and Y values. Um, <coughs> So coin.x is going to be equal to something and coin.y is going to be equal to something. So with the coin, remember before I said I want the objects falling it from random positions out of the sky. So what I'm going to do is get my coin to start in a random location. So on the x-axis, we're going to write the word random, which means we're now accessing this random module. And from that random module, we're going to access a function called randint, which stands for random integer. It's going to pick a random number along the x-axis, and we tell it what coordinates it can pick between. So two numbers, it needs to pick a number, a random number between. So somewhere between, I reckon, 20 and 780. So that's just inside the um, 800 pixel width mark. So we're starting 20 pixels in, and then finishing 20 pixels from the edge of the page, and it can pick a spot anywhere between those two numbers to fall out of the sky. I might put a comment next to that, so just say randomize the start position for the coin. Okay, for the Y value, um, we want it starting up near the top of the page here, so let's make it fall from the zero point, which is the very tip of the page. Alright, down the bottom, coin.draw, let's add it into the draw function so it gets drawn onto the screen. We might actually see a bit of this one if we give it a run. There we go. So you can just see the tip of the coin up there starting at y equals 0 and somewhere random on the x-axis. If I stop it and start it again, you'll see that coin moves. Each time we run our code, it will pick a new random location on the x-axis to start falling from. Okay, so there we go, it's moved again. So hopefully you get the idea on how that coin is working. Each time it falls from the sky, it's going to be in a random position. Now I want the same thing to happen for the other two pictures in our game. So we've got, where are we? The skull and the bomb. So let's set them up the same way. So we'll set up the skull next. Uh, we'll come up with a variable name. Skull equals actor. And then in brackets and quotation marks, we'll set it to the skull image there skull.x equals, and it's going to be the same as what we just wrote before, random dot random integer between 20 and 780. And then skull.y is going to equal 0. Now I reckon we could probably almost copy and paste this next bit. So let's put in a comment that says bomb. I just highlighted the skull section, press Control c to copy. Came down here and press Control v to paste, and everywhere we've got the word skull, replace it with the word bomb. Okay, so we've now got a bomb variable created, and attached to that is the bomb actor, which is that picture just there. The x value for the bomb is going to be a random number across the top of the page, and let's give it a run, and we should be able to see now the coin, the skull, and the bomb. Actually, I better put these in first down the bottom to draw them on the page. Alright, so we've got them drawn, let's give it a play. There we go, you can see the 
scale the coin and the bomb drawn on the page. If I stop it and run it again, you'll see they'll come up in random positions. And each time I run that program, they will appear in random locations. Okay, so that's that's looking pretty good too. Um, I reckon that's probably about all we need to do in this video. We brought in everything that we need to create our game. So in the next video, we're going to actually start. Um, we're going to start to get things moving and making our game, I guess, look a little bit better than a static screen that looks like that. We'll actually fix this black strip as well. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video tutorial.